from Cuenca, Ecuador. I am so excited to tell you that I'm going on a walking tour of Cuenca today. And so today I'm going out with my friend Andreas, who I have known for 10 years. In the past, we have always done, like he'll take me to really cool food places and show me traditional markets and things that maybe I would miss as a foreigner. However, today we're doing like what he does normally. So he does uh, tours of the city, so he's gonna take me on a walking tour. Anyway, we'll see how it goes. I have faith in him. He, he knows me really well, so I think we're gonna have a great day. Ready? Yeah. Let's have breakfast in, this, in the main squad. What do you think? Yeah, let's do it. Let's go that direction. Okay. On the way to breakfast, we stopped at two spots that were actually quite beautiful. We stopped at the Corte de Justicia, or the Justice Court. I have to admit, when Andreas was like, we should go in here, I was like, why would I really want to go into like a court building? It is gorgeous. You can walk right in. Um, it has like a very typical architectural feature that you find in old buildings here where it's built on the outside and then the inside is a courtyard often with a fountain. It's gorgeous. And then next on the main square you have a Sabinal which is at one point it was where you would study to become a priest and five or six years ago it was actually updated and is now really a court of a bunch of different restaurants most of them are international and so i wasn't really keen to have breakfast there instead i wanted to come to angeles which is a very local spot right on the main square normally when you kind of go to a restaurant on the main square you think it's super touristy but really this is all like ecuadorians coming here they have ice cream here, we are here for breakfast, and they have some fantastic bread and different kinds of coffee. Andreas is drinking like an ice cream coffee for breakfast. But I got motepillo, and I at first was like, oh my god, is there some kind of crazy cheese in here? But no, not at all. When you come to Ecuador and you have the eggs, you will notice that the yolks here are so orange and bright, and that's because you're probably going to be having, oh gracias. Uh, you're probably going to be having free-range eggs. So it's mote is hominy, um, and it is mixed with scrambled eggs and, and herbs. <laughs> Very classic uh, dish. Mm, it's really good. Okay. And of course you get fresh fruit juice. This one is naranjilla. Mm. Mm. It's nice and bright. It's kind of like if orange juice was mixed with melon, yeah, something like that. It's great. So if you want a croissant in Ecuador, just look for a Royale. These ones actually look really good. Mm, this is a good croissant. One of the interesting things here, if you look at some of the stained glasses, up top if you look at Virgin Mary, she's a darker color and it's a little bit of a nod and a wink there because this stained glass was actually made by an indigenous artist. So Mary doesn't have typical European features. Then if you look at the moon and the sun, this is very symbolic because the moon was the deity for the Kanyari people and of course the sun was for the Inca people. And this stained glass, because this is a Spanish built uh, building, actually recognizes all three of these communities being integral to the beginning of Cuenca. And you will not see this in other cities in Ecuador and probably not even in South America, recognizing the role of the indigenous people in the building of a city. Mm -hmm. 
144 stairs to the top. Oh, let's take a break and look at this. Ooh! Now we're on the other side of the square in what is called the Old Cathedral. The funny thing is, the Old Cathedral was never a cathedral. It was just a church. Cuenca did not have money to build a cathedral, so they just put all of their effort into upgrading this church, but everybody called it the cathedral, because as you know, a cathedral is more important than a church. They call it the Old Cathedral because obviously they have the new one, but it I don't know anywhere else in the world that has two cathedrals in one city other than Cuenca. And if you look down here, you see larger, massive stones and then some regular stones. These stones are from the Inca ruins. They did not actually steal these stones because the Inca ruins in this area were destroyed when there was kind of, a, I guess, an Incan civil war between the north and the south, south being in southern Peru. So. You can see in a lot of buildings, uh, Incan stones and other artifacts. It's the symbolism that you can see in Cuenca architecture, because we have a little bit of the Inca, a little bit of the Cañari, and then, of course, Spanish. the Spanish. Is this where the dead people are? Used to be. <laughs> <laughs> so, the Spanish, the, oh, the European Catholicism believed that uh, church land was holy land, so if you were born here, it was a stairway to heaven, to straight to heaven. Um, indigenous people were not considered even human beings, so they were not buried in this place. So the main uh, Catholic building will have these crypts. Uh, they actually will have two. One for the um, church people, yeah. you know priests and nuns and th things like that. And the other one for, was for the uh, prestigious um, Cuencanos of the time. And so they were just thrown in a bog here? No. Because okay. <laughs> look over there, it just looks like it's a bunch of skulls. So, okay, so are these urns in here then? No. This, okay, so I told you that this uh, cathedral was closed uh, for uh, 30 years. Yeah. So, and then in the early 2000s, they start the intervention uh, uh, because they needed to restore this building. All right, so I'm here at El Monasterio del Carmen, or the Carmen Monastery. And right here, 12 nuns live here cloistered. There are actually two cloistered monasteries in Cuenca, but only a handful left in all of Latin America. And nuns come in here and they never leave. They dedicate their lives to being inside the monastery for their life. To do that, they make a number of products from syrups to jellies, marmalades, different sweets that they can sell to the outside world, although they never see anyone from the outside world. There's actually like a turning room where you can put the products and turn it around and then it is sold. And so here, one of the things they are known for is the pitimas, agua de pitimas, which means uh, it's a type of water and it's made with a number of uh, herbs and flower petals and a number of things. Pitimas means more please. This is supposed to cure a number of things from insomnia to stomach problems to if you have skin problems. I've had this before. Uh, because I had dry skin coming to this like very arid Andes. I have dry skin again. And so I am hoping that this actually solves my dry skin. Will this drink heal me? I don't know, but let's try it first. Mm. Is this the one with sugar? No. Oh, okay, I was gonna say it's not very sweet at all. I like it. You can get it here for 50 cents. It is right outside the flower market, which is known as one of the best flower markets in the world. However, they do make a delicious agua de pitimas.
So we just finished up at Homero Ortega. That was actually a really fascinating visit because I have already seen some smaller artisanal uh, Panama hat shops in the Andes, but this was a luxury Panama hat museum and shop. They had people who were very famous from um, Ben Affleck to uh, Johnny Depp to like just so many people who have these hats. In fact, the iconic hat from uh, Pretty Woman was actually a Panama hat and then you could see how they make it. It was fascinating. And then in the store, uh, the woman put one of the hats on my head that was $150 and let me tell you, it was so soft. And I didn't think I really liked the traditional Panama hat style, but it was very tempting. And then I realized I would lose it. The thing about going to this place, if you're serious about getting a hat, is it was $150 there but it's at least three times more elsewhere. So you know you're getting a deal. However, the place that I went to in the mountains also was a really good deal and would be much more expensive elsewhere. So you gotta know where to go. Just don't go into the regular stores. Maybe call Andreas because he knows the good places to go. So this is the VIP room. Yeah. Most of the hats here cost hundreds of, of dollars. And or good. thousands. Even thousand. ¿Cuánto era este? Este dos mil quinientos dólares. Dos mil quinientos. Le voy a coger desde acá para no enseñar. Por favor. So this is the most expensive hat they have here. Oh, the weave here is interesting. Yeah. In heat neko, these hats will go around two thousand five hundred dollars. Right. That's the price tag here. No discount. But this one outside, Ecuador, will cost at least three times more. Yeah. So if this is like a $40 hat, right. the one that I'm holding in my hands. Then the ones that you are wearing, yes. it's even, you know, finer. Mm -hmm. That is like a hundred. And this one is, because it's super fine, it's 2000 something. We are now eating a late lunch in a neighborhood about 20 minutes outside the city center called San Joaquin. And uh, the restaurant is called Cristo del Consuelo. And this is a place that is very Cuencano. When they have something to celebrate, they no longer do it at home. They actually go to different restaurants. And the reason why Andreas wanted to come here was that number one, it has very traditional food from the Andes, but also it's really beautiful here. So there are lots of different fresco paintings and lots of colors and this place, like all of the tables, have at least six seats and that's because this is very much somewhere where you go with lots of other people. So we've ordered um, just a bit of traditional food. There are lots of different things. You can order the meat by the pounds, but we got the bendeja, Cristo del Consuelo, which has a number of different kinds of meat, some sides, some avocado, so it's a really good dish to share because the other dishes which you order by the pound or the sides on their own are really meant like if you have a big group of people with you, it's just two of us. So I think we're just going to be eating like a lot of meat once again and a lot of pork. If you're in the Andes, always choose the pork over the beef. It's always going to be better. Super thin. Mm. It has that nice charcoal flavor. The morcilla. So this is blood sausage as we know it, or a black sausage. Well, that's really good. You try it? Yep. Mm hmm Very tasty. These are basically potato cakes. Um, they get this color not from dye, but actually from the type of potato used. So, so many different kinds of potatoes in Ecuador. Over 200? Yeah, over 200 different types of potatoes. Some are like creamy and smooth and have like different kind, kinds of flavors. I wish we had more in Canada, but when you come to Ecuador or Peru, you completely rethink what the potato could be. I'm just gonna eat this with my hands. Mm. Ooh, that's good. They have some really traditional desserts here, and while I'm not a dessert person, or I keep saying that, I am looking forward to trying one. So this dessert is with a dulce of tree tomato, also known as tomate de arbol. Don't be confused, this is not a tomato that grows on a tree. 
It's actually a fruit, but not super fruity. It almost has like a tomato-like flavor, but with a hint of sweetness, but still that bitterness sometimes you get from a tomato. This dessert is served with rice pudding and ice cream. So let's give it a try. Mmm. Mmm. It's great with the ice cream because it gives it like a creamy flavor. I'm not a fan really of rice pudding. You can have all of that. Let me try it. Mmm, it's coconut in there. Mmm. So on the bus, they do offer you uh, a glass of canelazo, but we did not follow the group. We came up to the very top, to the bar, cafeteria, restaurante, La Colina Turi. This place is really busy on the weekends, but this is Wednesday night, so actually we're the only people here, which is fantastic because we got a bar seat overlooking this view, and it is so beautiful, and then this, is 250 for this large warm glass of canelazo. Now canelazo is a drink very typical in the Andes. I've had it many times. Um, it is alcoholic, so it's aguardiente, which is an unaged sugar cane alcohol, and they mix it with naranjilla fruit, uh, cinnamon, and and sugar. Everyone, again, has their own recipe, so you can argue over who has the best one. Some people say the best one is right here. Let's see. But it actually tastes like kind of like just a warm punch. It's really, really nice. This is the end of today. Time to go home, but I have lots more to share with you tomorrow.